everybody. Good morning. This is the May 12th meeting of the Reuse Subcommittee of the Public Works Commission. And has everyone had a chance to go through the March 17th minutes? Need a copy. My I name's see. Diana instead of Diane, but I'll let that go. About <laughs> no. right. time we learned that. <laughs> Are there any comments, revisions, blocking concerns with the minutes of the May se uh, the March seventeenth meeting? No. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. All right. Second. I'll second. All right, Alan. David, before we progress, yes, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that David is going to be leaving in about half an hour, and that I will take over, and Roger is taking minutes. All right. Uh, okay. Minutes are passed. Let's move on to event coordinator updates. Uh, I guess the March 30th B I should address. Um, you know, it's there isn't a lot of food waste for us to deal with at that event. Um, Mac, you were there, and is there anybody else with us? I Diana, didn't show really up. No, I didn't show up. All oh, right. Um, it, it, I mean, it's really not an event that needs three people, Diana. It, Great. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's well attended, and there is a lot of food there, uh, but there's really only two stations that you need uh, to, to kind of collect the compost, but it's an educational opportunity. Um, once. Once the B gets going, it's there isn't really that much to do. We were a little bit late in setting it up, and people started eating earlier, I think, than we thought. It, thought it was around 5:30. We needed to be set up by then, and there were a couple of little little questions that we had, like about recyclability of certain things, like Steve Harrell's little domes he put on his. Right. You know, I think I sent you some. Some uh, and you sent it to John. Some uh, suggestions or thoughts about that. Yeah. So I don't remember them all now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I'm not sure. Harold's was new this year. Yeah. And I don't think they had signed on to the zero waste yeah. policy. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they need to be included next year. Basically, right. is is because uh, they had those domes were not recyclable, right. in my estimation. Uh, but anyway, it was it was a fine event and. Um, uh, whether or not we want to continue doing it. I mean, it's great that John signs on, but you notice he's always away at those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this the second year that's happened? Yes. Oh. Uh, the April 30th rally. Uh, John did a spectacular job of organizing that. That was really, really well directed, um, well attended. Uh, you know, one of the things that we look forward to are the the families that come and, and hang out on the grass just waiting for things to come in and I can't tell you that there were more people that did that in the past but there were as many as, as we've seen in the past so it was really great I mean a lot of stuff moved we still ended up with a dumpster full of uh, hey Peter of uh, rigid plastics but um, that event if, if you ever needed to have a metric on whether or not it was important to have that event that really great. established itself um, That's great. Alan, I mean, uh, David, anything that you noticed there that day? I, uh, when the driver of the shredder was leaving, I asked him if he had a count, and he said, I, I picked up 8,000 pounds. Is that right? <laughs> wow. And there was a lot of traffic. I mean, it was almost, say, 40% of the cars coming in were for uh, shredding. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Lots wow. I mean, that There's really... Tons. Well, but that really speaks to the importance of having these different stations and, you know, the pumpkins being a real draw in the fall and the paper shredding. So that's great. I mean, I know a lot of people really appreciate the styrofoam. Was uh, Were you working on the styrofoam, David? I was working as a front end tra traffic. Uh -huh, okay, you were traffic. And, uh, John, you were indispensable on the rigid plastics. That was really great to have you be a part of that. Thanks. Um, yes, Susan. I just wanted to say a couple things. The, there was a dumping incident before the event on Friday afternoon. Somebody just dumped a bunch of stuff in the parking lot or mm -hmm. on the side. So Deb, uh, somebody called Deb and Deb went over and um, took care of it, <coughs> put it in her truck or something. But it's something that 
I spoke to Tim at Smith Oak about it. He said periodically it happens with various events. The um, people dump so the number five plastics. About it. Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, that people just dump stuff before. He said the ski and say, ski sale and swap happen. The same thing happens uh -huh. periodically. Um, but we just don't want to. You know, it's something to keep keep an eye out for because we have the potential for getting a lot of that. Um, so I'm not sure how we could mitigate that. But, but, it, but it was, it was garbage it that was dumped. No, it was, oh, it was? bulky, rigid oh. plastics. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's, people just need to understand that this is a borrowed site and that, you know, we, they can't start collecting in advance. You know, I don't know if you remember the conversations about the reuse center early on, or at, at one point we were talking about putting temporary structures in the Smith Vogue parking lot. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And one of the problems with that was just people coming and leaving stuff. You know, it's just very difficult to control yeah. that if you don't have a lock gate. It is very hard. And if you have a lock gate, they'll leave it outside the gate. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other thing, uh, two other things. Um, we switched the, the 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 dumpsters that were supposed to go to styrofoam versus bulky rigid. Um, they got switched somehow, I guess Scott, so we just need to coordinate better because Scott wanted the styrofoam in the one in one truck and the bulky in the two trucks because the styrofoam has to go to Ludlow and he only wanted to make one trip. So because we swapped the two trucks, I mean the two uh, roll-off situations, he had to make two trips to Ludlow which is just, it's just very time consuming. So um, that's something that I just want to put out there for um, better planning next time. So the, so the dumpsters are different. They're not the same. Well, we have, you know, we've limited access to roll-offs. So, so he had, I think, two 20-yard roll-offs and one 40. Uh -huh. And I think that, I, I don't know why the decision was made, but somehow the decision was made to, to reverse what he had planned and um, so it was it, you know we just have to do better planning better uh, communication next okay time. but who on our team is responsible is that John's job to figure that out John, John sauce as the coordinator uh, well I, I, I <coughs> believe it was John that made the choice but I don't know for certain not okay. being there okay. I don't know for certain I just heard that it was different from what how, Scott had planned just so we understand how would we have known that Exactly. Well, that's why that's why I'm bringing it up. The larger dumpster the larger, should go for we the need styrofoam. To think, yeah, I mean, yeah, because he makes hmm. frequent trips and it's a lot easier to get to the Murph yeah, than well, it is I, to get to the I understand the situation, right. but yeah. somehow he needs to communicate that to us, right? Right. Right. That's, yeah. Well, that and somebody somebody, somebody, somebody told him, put this dumpster here and the, this dumpster here. Right. Who's that? You know? I, I believe it was John. I do not know. Okay, but we want the larger one for the styrofoam? The larger one for the styrofoam, that so that sense. he only has to make one trip. As, as okay. a default setup, unless they tell us something Absolutely, different. yeah. Okay. And, and sometimes he has access to two large ones, and it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. I think that that's probably what's happened in the past. Okay. But this time, we had two small ones, and that was an issue. Okay. Um, the other thing, yeah. You sure it's 20 and 40, not 15 and 30, the dumpsters? You might well, really well, whatever it is, I doesn't mean, matter. Trust Larger Scott. and smaller. I trust right. Scott. He, he, had, he said that it was, he, it was the same amount of space. So, um, <coughs> so the other thing I wanted to mention is that because it was really busy and it was fabulous, there were, um, there were some cars there from students that had gone on a field trip that, that were not moving, that were in our way. That was kind of a pain. Um, but that made it more congested and with the people hanging out to get plastics, it, it was a little frenetic there and I was worried about safety, especially if kids running to their parents' car across the way, etc. So in the future, I think uh, we need to direct people maybe at the greeting area and tell them if they're going to be staying a while to look for material and they're not just dropping off, that they need to park their car beyond the dumpster where you guys were collecting the bulky ridges. So, and, and not, not across the street from it, but, but beyond so that, so that kids and the families can go on the lawn to their cars and not cross back and forth. So, and whatever we need to do to make that happen would make it 
a lot. Um, then you could have actually two ro two lanes of people dropping off too. We did so in the rigid plastics have two lanes. Uh huh. Um, we ended up with more garbage this time mm -hmm. than we had in the past, mm -hmm. and the, the reason for that is that the students that we had and it was great. They were really enthusiastic, but they. I think they probably weren't comfortable giving people's garbage back to them if they were rejected mm -hmm. plastics. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's not like we were overwhelmed with garbage, but I'm used to ending up with virtually no garbage. Right. And like we had a whole box of those black plastic uh, yeah. trays, yeah. food trays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so maybe yeah. the person had dr uh, dri driven off before we were able to give it back to them, but right. that was, uh, you know, we might want to station students elsewhere if right. they can't, you know, if they're right. not. Right. Are we up sure this is those, I had someone totally insist that those black rigid plastic, those black trays were rigid plastic and Karen used to take them and why right. aren't you taking them anymore? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, um, I took a picture of them and I will check with the MRF people, okay. but black plastic trays in general, there, there's just not a lot you can do with black they plastic. Don't go so in the, not they don't go in household recycling, I know that. But in bulky rigid, bulky I wondered rigid. if they. Well, they're not bulky. Okay. Mm. So I will check. Get it. I'll check with Murph. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. I'll, <coughs> check, I'll check with Murph because yeah, there was another. I don't remember taking them in the past. Okay. I, uh, I remember someone being very insistent. Well, no, that I, I met nasty. with that woman. Okay. And she. <laughs> it probably was the same woman. It, it was probably. the same. No, it was yeah, because, because you. I called you over and you finally yeah. said, "No, no, we're not. We're not taking these." Okay. Um, Peter. So I have an idea on the lanes because if uh, David has to spend more time directing people, that that line is going to get longer. And so here's an opportunity for us to give a handout <laughs> with you know the logo, what we're doing, etc., other events. Give them a handout, and that shows them if you're staying longer, you know. It, it is a captive audience. You're right, Peter. If anyone's going to enjoy that kind of material, it's going to be yeah. the people coming to our events. Yeah. And I'll tell them what to do right then and there. Mm -hmm. And here's this other stuff we got going on. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of an advertising opportunity. The other thing I wanted to say, speaking on that subject, on this John, or whoever put the ad in the Hampshire Life, <coughs> not ad, but the freebie, it didn't say what, it said recycling event, but it didn't say what what it was. It didn't say rigid plastic or styrofoam. Yeah, or. unfortunately they get the same press release that everybody gets which lists everything. I mean, uh, it, I, I give bullet points of the five, uh -huh. four or five things that we collect each time I send out. Yeah, I so it was whoever did the, wrote the, the calendar entry that um, that decided to eliminate. Mm -hmm. Did they, did they refer mm -hmm. us to our website? Okay. Do you mean it was at the, at the Gazette someone decided? Yeah. It's Dan D. Nicola, he's the one who edits the thing, right. and, and it's good to do it in a relationship The same release with him. goes to everybody. Yeah, but it's it's more voluminous than they can obviously deal with, mm -hmm. so he's going to edit it down to the, what he thinks are the essentials. But if he got it just the essentials, the way we want it, because it would have been useful, I think, for people to know exactly sure. what. Sure, of course. Absolutely. John? If, um, in regard to the parking and traffic, if we put some like no parking signs or some horses with no parking along that whole lane of Five. parking along Five the building, mm -hmm. so like none of our cars, no cars at all, right. we could actually end up with three lanes That's of three traffic mm -hmm. and just direct everybody past the dumpers, dumpsters like Susan right. said, to park if they're going to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And that would alleviate if there's a sign there because sometimes it gets so busy people sneak in and just park and next thing you know there's a car there and there's nobody in the car because they're already looking. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But if there's a bunch of signs <coughs> clear, and, and also another uh, a clear exit sign with an arrow pointing around the building mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. mitigate the people that are trying to do U-turns and go back out right. the way they right. came yeah. in. Yeah, that happened uh, last weekend too. Mm -hmm. A lot of that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it needs to be good. These be reusable. Yeah. Right. Whatever event. Yeah. Well, I have exit signs. Yeah. yeah. Good so they're Great. We just need sawhorses. Yeah, mm -hmm. Matt. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned the the uh, black trays being not bulky, and it made me think: what what is bulky? Mm -hmm. What constitutes bulky? How big does it, an object have to be? Or are there problems with smaller things going in there? It. I think of it because of the size of the limit in size that they take for container recycling, which is two gallons or less. 
If it's more than two gallons, it's not supposed to go into your uh, curbside trash. So I think of like a two gallon um, water thing with a handle on it. Anything bigger than that, I, I think of as bulky. Okay. I will get an official description from the MRF people. Because we definitely take smaller it, things, like toys. Yeah, well, so, yeah, and then some of the things that I did see some little teeny tchotchke toys, those are those we shouldn't be taking the bulky, rigid plastic either. Part of the what it is is that it has to be bailable. Hmm. So if, if you're going to, if, if you, if you, I, I have pictures of the bay where they put the bulky, rigid plastic, and it's just like, it looks like a, a horse stall, you know, a large horse stall, essentially, and they scoop it up put it in the baler and bale it. And if it's all these little small lids and you know whatever fall out, it, they're gonna get thrown away. Mm -hmm. So there's the, no point. The mm -hmm. baler is just straps too, right? It's not it's a like machine a bag. that gets compressed. Yeah. It's big. Right, compressed, but it's not a it's bag, it's just a straps. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I wondered about that because when Scott comes and like smashes things down, mm -hmm. there must be little bits that get broken off in there too. So another question. Uh, about this because last year we had a whole bunch of flower pots at the mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. and we plastic flower pots mm -hmm. and we put them in the bulky with your plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's correct. That's correct. But some of these are little right things. Right. Should we right. not be doing that? Well they're they're stacked. Yes. So stacked like that they're very bailable. So that doesn't bother me so much. Yeah. So it has to it, uh, I'll available go, I'll go into that. Sorry. Oh I can address that in a minute. Oh because we can use them at the pot swap. Well, they came from the pot swap. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they can't go there, then they can go to, they don't have to be recycled, they can be brought to uh, have the garden center. Well, Roger, this is just a question yeah. about whether or not it's bailable and right. uh, right. bulky. So, so I, uh, one more question, Peter. I think of bulky as actually hard plastic, basically, it's stuff that does not have vinyl. Rigid. Yeah, well, and it from, but there's everything that's small, I put in something that's larger that'll contain it. So well, I will find out. Yeah, I will find out what what sold. their official rules are. <laughs> if if you remember the first one that we did, the pilot with the DEP, they were just as confused as any of the other DEP <laughs> <laughs> about what to accept and what not to accept. There was a really well, it educational was a pilot event. program. Yeah. So uh, we we kind of wrote some of the rules for the pilot. You know, that's why they do a pilot program because you so you can learn what the issues are. When you get your information back from your pictures from Earth or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it might help if there's certain things we definitely can't take. If you grab some examples of them, mm -hmm. yeah, we certainly have them, and maybe just put them on a board so mm -hmm. the volunteers can see. Here's the board. Here's what we take. Here's mm -hmm. what we don't take. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I think the reason for black is it can't be seen by the by the, by the machines. It can't identify it. Really? Yeah, I, I think that's why it can't do black. That's household though. That's household or something. A lot of a lot yeah. of this is driven by demand, and black mm -hmm. plastic is not in demand. You can't color it. You can't. You know, th there are very few things that you can do with it. You can so make piers out in the ocean. Uh, you know, where they get knocked down by that's storms. One yeah, but that's, yeah. that could be a resource as long as you can collect it in a car load and send it. Okay, let's move on to the pot exchange. John Sauce, oh, did anybody work with John? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Roger, how yeah. was it? Uh, it was great. It was pretty much like the, the rest of them. Uh, <coughs> I got there, John had just finished setting up. It wasn't, the swap wasn't open yet. And uh, Smith Folk had dropped off a few hundred pots, and we had the pots from the previous week. And so they're all set up like a bazaar on the ground. Mm -hmm. And the, the signs were great, you know, that made it very obvious uh, what we were doing. And uh, just people just came and, and brought stuff and dropped it off. It was great to have two people, uh, both to take breaks and the other because the uh, traffic setup wasn't that great. Uh, we had, at first they had just had one half of the, of the parking lot entrance uh, blocked off. And that was confusing as people were coming and going out of that small entrance. And of course, that's where the cars are coming and going and people are walking back and forth between the parking lots, so that wasn't good. So we decided to block it off and then have someone stand there and move the cones if they were going to let somebody in. But then people kept turning around and l exiting that way as well, and that didn't work that well. So that would be nice to have the exit signs. To keep were people going. leaving a lot of pots with you as well as taking Oh, yeah. Yeah, people were pulling up and coming up with, you know, big tracks big trash bags full of pots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the flats, flats worked, uh, went really quickly because people buying the plants at the plant sale. 
we're getting yeah, those. And then uh, ceramics were hot. <laughs> ceramic pots, you know, for those. Right. I helped a woman bring two armloads from the back parking lot, and not one of them hit the ground. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> They That's were, right. Uh, yeah. So a lot of stuff. A lot. And, and we use rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the crinklies, even the uh, black crinkly little uh, individual plant starter. You know, we had. That's we're not supposed to take garbage. Yeah. Well, uh, Smith Volk had dropped off a few, uh -huh. and, uh, and so people brought more, and people were taking them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we probably ended up with fewer than we started with. Uh -huh. Maybe maybe yeah. a dozen or two. I don't know that's something that we want to promote no, because if we get lots left over, they go in the trash. Right. But they go in the trash if we don't swap them. Sure. Too. But we have to pay for them to go in the trash. Okay. Just so you know. No, no, I mean, we can discuss yeah. it. Yeah. This yeah. is fine. Mm -hmm. No, it's a, it's a good discussion point because mm -hmm. people were taking them and using mm -hmm. them. Okay. So we probably gave at least, I don't know, 50 or 60 of them away or 100. People just, they were just taking them. They were taking stacks of them. I, what I was doing was nesting them in each other so people mm -hmm. could just take a big stack of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, lots of pots. And, and by the end of it, uh, you know, we didn't have that many we had to throw away. Excellent. And oh, well, we had a bunch that both. Uh, we took a couple of carloads to, to, to have the gardens, mm -hmm. which they were happy to have. They had an empty bin. Really? Yeah. Their bin was empty. So they oh, I didn't realize. You're not talking about the crinkly ones. You're talking about no, the big ones. Yeah, yeah, the regular, yeah. The regular ones. Okay. You yeah, just, no, they were just good ones, and you didn't want to put them in the dumpster? Yeah, no mm -hmm. need to dump them. Just drive them That's there great. And load them up. So this is, they give them Thank away. you for doing that. Yeah, it's That's a free little nice exchange thing. place. Yeah. Yeah. It's often full. But it's often full. It wasn't. Yeah, good it wasn't yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. It was empty. But it's springtime. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else, Roger? Uh, no, that? that's pretty much it. Right. Uh, because the closing time was a little odd because they don't close the plants that close not close till one, uh -huh. and we start to wind down, get a little tired <laughs> by like noon or one. But we stayed, we stayed through. So we should get younger volunteers for that. There you go. That's <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> or have the food truck come by. No, I don't know. Mm. They, they were uh, selling food and coffee. That was good in the, <clears> the restaurant. Um, recent report. Anybody want to give that? Mac, I think you've been the supervisor most recently, right? Um, I'll start and then people can chime in. Um, and we have some numbers uh, too, right, Susan? On, on we have some numbers during the month of April. I have been taking the, the weight information in the four weeks in April. We collected 1,800 pounds. Is that the number that I gave you? Distributed. We just, yeah, we, we distributed. So uh, 1,800 pounds of material was adopted, and that was about 188 different people. I don't know if that's completely, if there's some overlap there week to week, but 188 entries were made, uh, so we made about 180 people very happy. So 188 different people brought stuff in, and we collected yeah, 1,800. Yeah, that's how it's killed in. And how much went out, how much left? How much the, that's this what is I what's left. That's, what's, that's yeah. what, left, what left the building. What left the building was 1,800 pounds. Right. Okay. All right. We don't count the number of people that just come in to get stuff, uh, to drive stuff off. That oh, okay. This count. is all outgo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm remembering the 1,800 exactly correctly. Was it I thought it was more 2, than that. 2,800? I, I thought you had told me a ton and a half. I yeah. texted me. Which would yeah, be, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Numbers don't stay in my head very well. <laughs> anyway, the a lot of stuff. 188, I remember, <laughs> but I don't know about the tonnage. Um, okay, so other, otherwise... Um, you said 2.5 tons of goods. Okay, well, there you go. Okay. 2.5. That, that, that I had the number five. in front That's a much more impressive five number. Tons. That's 5,000 5, pounds. 2.5 tons. That's so they have tons? 5,000 pounds. Four, that's more than 1,000 4, pounds a week. 5,000 I think. That's, that's, a lot that, that's for four sessions, I think. That's for four weeks. Well, yeah. That's really some really big rebar. <laughs> like 30 pounds it's of rebar. It's interesting how much, how, how, how much heavier things are than we than yeah. you would think. Good. I mean, like, we had some of those lamps with the plastic shades. Somebody brought four of them in. And on Wednesdays, people have been weighing stuff and putting the weights on the heavier items so that people don't have to weigh them. They were 10 pounds each. I never would have mm -hmm. guessed that they were 10 pounds. Yeah. We, had, we had pieces of lumber that weighed 40 pounds each. Mm -hmm. And wow. one guy took five or six of them wow. in one wow. shot. That's great. But yeah, I think it's, I think uh, things have gone well. Um, 
we, you know, in, in terms of the traffic flow, the new parking setup has worked pretty well, although there's always people that come in and do crazy things, and so you always have to keep an eye on the traffic situation. Um, the new tents are in operation. We have a tent for, you know, both the incoming stuff and the outgoing stuff, and we had them both set up last weekend, and uh, it was good because it rained a little bit. And now that they're initially set up, they're, they're pretty easy to good. take down and put back up. It's not a big deal. Um, the, you know, the, the, the procedures, the intake goes very quickly. It's a question of um, just looking the stuff over and saying what we can keep and what we can't versus writing everything down. So that goes much faster. And the outgoing goes quickly as well. We're, we're weighing stuff and we're, we're actually pre-weighing when possible. So on Wednesdays when I'm out there, uh, one of the things we do is we go around and we weigh the heavier stuff and we put the weight right on it so that will speed things up at the takeout. Um, and we have several, we have one digital scale and two bathroom scales in operation <laughs> right now. And um, so yeah, that's going well. Um, we're using some new forms. Um, this is this is this is sort of a draft. This isn't a final form, but basically we're keeping track of weight uh, and then breaking it down into non-recyclable metal, bulky, rigid plastic, and then also indicating whether or not a fee has been paid on the on the items that are going out. So we've been tracking that so far. Um, staffing if wise, I may just interject. I I have a little bit of a concern about that because it. It's um, potentially slow, can slow things down. Have you noticed a slowing down? Um, what specifically? Well, if you're gonna, the whole idea was to really simplify things and just weigh it. And right. if we're now breaking it down into categories, then you weigh all the recyclables for, weigh all the metal recycling first, and then weigh something. I mean, it just can be very complicated. It's, it seems. it's just a check. So you don't so know somebody how comes up somebody comes up and you know a lot of times what they have is just one category uh -huh. so yeah. it's just easy and then if somebody comes up with some metal and some non-recyclable we'll just weigh the metal stuff first okay and just uh, put a check or put sometimes what or somebody what I do is if somebody let's say somebody brings up five pounds of metal and ten pounds of non-recyclable I'll I'll put a check under metal and put five pounds, you know, and I'll put under non-recyclable, I'll put the 10 pounds, and then there's a total area and I'll put 15 pounds. And it, okay. it goes really quickly. So it's, as long as it's consistent and, and that people know that if they put a quantity in the recyclable or whatever field that it can't be in the... It, it has to be exclusive of the other stuff. You know what I mean? So that the total is clear. Yeah, right. I think as long as we have one total, like if it gets busy and you can't weigh everything individually, you put the total in the total box and that's the end of the story. If okay. you have time, you, put, okay. you break okay. it out and that's give us great. some more data. That'll work. Mm -hmm. That'll work. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I think that's going well staffing wise. I think we've, you know, we have every Saturday, although sometimes people don't, it doesn't look like we're going to be that well staffed. It's always worked out that we've had plenty of staff people there. Good. I think in the long run, you know, we what we need to think about is helping people who are regular volunteers become supervisors. Mm -hmm. You know, so that we have a a, a, a growing pool of supervisors. Um, and already Leslie has, you know, co-supervised. Uh, Delila wants to be a, a supervisor, and I think she's headed in that direction. I could see you being a supervisor for sure. <laughs> when you're ready. Past tense. <laughs> um, so no, they're in the tents, not past it. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you let two tents go by. Yeah. You know, there's there's stuff that there's stuff that needs to happen still. We still don't have our, our, the annex has been going and that's been going well and people have been taking stuff out of the annex, but we still have uh, a roof issue there that we're hoping will be taken care of and then the lights will come after that. Um, we can put lights in. We have now. lights in. We yeah. have lights in. Yeah, we have clamp in. lights in there and stuff. It'd be nice to have okay. official. Yeah, yeah, we have a little front door, cosmetic front door thing that we're going to work on. Now that Alan is back, and Peter and Alan are going to sure get right on that. Um, 
we um, we have our our who takes what stuff going, but we need to blow that. We want to blow that up and put it on one of the bulletin boards so people can see that really well. You mean the end users? Yeah. 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 Um, we've had already had one pickup by the Salvation Army. They took about 160 pounds worth of stuff a couple of weeks ago. They showed up when they were said they were going to, which was great. And we also had someone come out from the Cancer Connection, um, and we're trying to establish a regular, you know, pickup from them. Someone came yesterday from Dakin. They have a thrift oh. store, and she took a small number of things. Great, great. That's great. I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't either. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. I think that's that's about all I had on my mind here. John did a wonderful repair, by the way, Roger. We've got a, 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 a wooden high chair out there, a beautiful little high chair, very solid, but it was missing a metal piece that would help the tray that the kid uh -huh. come on and off, and he fabricated a metal piece nice. that mm -hmm. is perfect. And uh, so he took something that nobody would take for a year or so, and uh, he's wow. made really a hot item, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how fast it moves. Yeah, and then Susan, you know, we had a, a thing where somebody brought back something we had given away last year, which is pretty big and bulky, this Kids Play Kitchen, and Susan posted it on the Facebook page, and somebody came and got that, so. You uh, said three people came looking for it, didn't you? I knew of Multiple just, people. I didn't, I, I wasn't in touch with those other two. Okay. I just knew the one that came early on a Saturday morning and said, is it still here? Mm -hmm. And they got what it. What was it? Right. It was the kitchen. Play kitchen. Play kitchen. It was oh, a very kitchen. heavy play kitchen. Uh, yeah. When you try and take the stickers off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, stickers I, I'm rigid. I got it to be a little more rigid. But yeah, I never got all the stickers off. Yeah. yeah. That's been so there for a while. Um, yeah. I yeah. did want to just give an update on the roofing situation. As I mentioned, we do have the mayor's approval to spend the money. I told Thanks, the David. roofing guy. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. I told the roofing guy that that we are definitely we definitely want him to do the work and he said that he would get back to me later this week they needed to look at their situation he said it's not going to take that long mm -hmm. so the other issue that i have to deal with is figuring out uh, i assume it's okay for him to be out there alone on a weekday so that he doesn't have to come during wednesday or operating saturday operating hours yeah. mm -hmm. Um, but I just need to confirm that Scott's out there periodically, yeah. and, and I think it'll probably be okay. But he said mm -hmm. it will not take a lot of time to do it once mm -hmm. they get going. Is this Tim Luce? Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, I worked with him. Oh, good. Oh, good. Excellent. Oh, well, I've, I've been dealing with, I guess, his father does estimate it. Mm -hmm. so, so that's yeah. the s situation with that. So any idea of when? He's going to call me this week. Okay. We have a question about Wednesday recenter. Mm -hmm. John was out there yesterday. I got there sort of lagging along at about nine, nine thirty, something mm -hmm. like that. And John was there, ready for business. So and we weren't sure if I. My impression was that we weren't open entirely for business on Wednesdays. But um, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You so I guess the issue is around clarification. Um, so for instance. Well, but Dave mm -hmm. had sent an email not too long ago saying, you know, Wednesday and Saturday volunteers are needed for this, this, mm -hmm. and that. Um, and when I went through that orientation session, mm -hmm. the same thing was mentioned about volunteers for Wednesday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. The sign-up sheet explicitly lists Wednesday and right. Saturday. Mm -hmm. And this past Wednesday, shortly after I got Dave's note, I looked on the sign-up and I noticed um, since you were gone, there was no supervisor signed up. And I went through the supervisor orientation, so I said, well, I'll be a good player, and I signed up as a supervisor for Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> so I went, and I opened up, and until Diana came, she was my first customer. Um, <laughs> well, you have people there. After, yeah, after you yeah. showed up, we had quite a, actually, there was five or six that came and dropped off quite a few things, quite really? a few decent things. Yeah. Um, but several of them said the same thing, that they fully expected that we were there. They brought a carload of stuff explicitly really? for us to be dropped off. Um, so I guess somewhere, other than just within this group, in the general public, is the right. perception that we are open on Wednesday. And as I left, Marcia, is that her name? Mm -hmm. Marcia, the yeah. gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. I talked to her for a few minutes, and she said, you know, it was good that I was there, because in the past, people have shown up on a Wednesday that 
maybe it wasn't open, and then she said, we get a lot of flack for that, because mm -hmm. people come expecting it to be here, they've loaded up their cars, they yeah, show up, right. and we, they can't drop stuff off, she said, they take it out on us. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we, right. we have never said good. that we were open on Wednesdays, ever. So Wednesdays <coughs> had been decided that we were going to use it as a work day, and if stuff came in, and somebody was there, we were willing to take it. Okay. So I guess word is getting <laughs> word out. Word of mouth is getting out there. That, okay. that we are open on Wednesday. So hmm. how do you guys want to deal with that? It's hard to say no to good stuff. Right. But once this kind of train starts moving in that direction. It's already left the track. The yeah. Station. So either we need to say, <laughs> no, we're not <laughs> open, <laughs> or we need to say, yes, we are open for intake only, or, you know, we need to be have some clarity, I think, around. Yeah, I mean, what I I've, what, I've, what I've usually done is I, I, I will accept good stuff, mm -hmm. but I usually say to people, we're really not officially open. This is our day to reorganize. Um, please come Saturdays. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, I haven't turned stuff away because mm -hmm. that seems <coughs> crazy at some level, and. Um, yeah, I guess so. That that's basically been been my approach on it, and it, it hasn't general. I mean, six, five or six people is a lot. I mean, it's usually more like two or three or none. Even well, even uh, I volunteered yeah. with you a week ago Wednesday. Yeah, and we had quite a few coming and going. As a matter yeah. of fact, some stuff got taken. Yeah, out I don't see why we wouldn't have people take things away. If the we're other there. thing, I, yeah, I mean, the other well, thing. Well, then I, we need to staff it. Right, right. I know. Right. But right. Maybe we and, do. And is it sustainable? You know, our, our, then we need to have a supervisor there too, and and can we support that level of of management? Yeah, I was going to say that's the other thing I've told people is that we're definitely open Saturdays. We're not definitely open on Wednesdays because there may be times when you know we just don't have the volunteers to staff it on Wednesdays. Yeah, but the perception Sin is that we're right. Open. There's a perception, but since, yeah. since yeah. She is you're using there. Wednesdays also for. Um, like charities to come, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we want to get some kind of a press release or something out that says Wednesdays by appointment only, mm -hmm. just so you address the charity issue, but let people know that it's by appointment. And they might get lucky if they show up and we're there. Somebody else has an appointment, but there's no expectation at that point. For the charities or for everybody? Mm -hmm. I think what just in proposing? general, proposing a notice saying we're open Wednesdays by appointment only. A big sign. That way, if a charity the, wants to show up and let us know, somebody will be there. But otherwise, if the general public shows up and... But if we continue to take material that comes in without an appointment, then that's also going to get around. Yeah. I mean, that's if, right. if, if you already are having people saying, coming without, you know, this, I have never, ever said we're open on Wednesdays. Mm. But we, the, the Sign Up Genius has people the sign signing up, genius, up for... Right, well, but that's, those are volunteers. So, well, we, right. we ask them to do that so that there will always be somebody out there in case that... That's um, not a public document. I know, yes. but it's it is perception. Word it of is, mouth. Yeah. It's but uh, my guess is that simply because the the center, I mean, at the center, the um, facility there is open on Wednesdays mm -hmm. for the general public, and so people just assume that we're part mm -hmm. of that. That's, that's I think that's part of that. Yeah. And, yeah. and they just come out there and yeah. um, So I I think we really should move towards opening on Wednesdays, although I don't think we can do it with number of volunteers we have, but I think that's one of talking about mission goals that, that would be a direction we should move in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, the I, demand is there. I, I agree with that. I think, um, and I, I mean, I think what, we, what we've what we got going right now is, if it, clearly if it ramps up from here, it could be challenging, but so far it, it's been doable. And we've had, you know, like Elaine comes out consistently on Wednesdays. I'm usually there on Wednesdays. John's been coming out. Diana's coming out for part of it. So we sort of have a, cr we've had a crew right. that's been sufficient. The other thing is it's just with Wednesdays, you're, you know, you, because you, if you keep up your calling schedule and your nonprofits coming, so much of it to me is about keeping this room in the space and not letting the space there's a tendency for the space to get overfilled. Mm -hmm. and, and it's keeping on top of that that makes it possible to accept more stuff on Wednesday. Um, 
So, and that's been okay so far. I think there's been a pretty good balance between. I propose that we talk about this at our working group meeting and figure out some yeah. kind of a resolution in the short term. And, and clearly in the long term, we'd like to be open Wednesdays. The problem is we've got to, if you're open Wednesdays, you need to do every, you know, a lot of what thing. you do on Saturday. You have to do the whole banana. And are we able to support that whole banana right now? It's not the end of the world if we aren't. It's disappointing. Um, but maybe we can plan for that for 2017. You know, so so it's, we just let's talk about it at our next working group meeting. But thank you for bringing it up. And uh, I just follow up. Uh, is there a specific list of items that we absolutely cannot take? Um, for instance, somebody yeah, tried to drop off was that a gas powered trimmer yeah, or something? Yeah, beautiful weed whacker. It would look. He said it worked fine, and yeah. but then he said we can't take gas. He could put it on the bulletin board. Yeah, because there is a list in, in our brochure, and, and I'm going to be updating something that hasn't okay. been updated. So there is a list of them that we yeah. can get posted in. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, could, I, should, I should, could have showed you that. Okay, that's all right. So um, I would like to swap the next two items mm -hmm. on the agenda and talk about the mission statement. Because the recenter working group is going to be having a casual discussion about goals and vision for the future, we our vision was to have a permanent place. We now have a permanent place. So what's the what's our next vision? So there's going to be an informal meetup uh, to talk about that. 14 June. Uh, 14 June. But the uh, I also just wanted to let people, this, did you all get my email yesterday? This is the, the mission statement that has been approved by, um, can you guys, do you mind sharing? That was approved by the Public Works Commission. And um, this is what we're working on for this committee. So I wanted you guys to read it over if there's, something that you think is glaringly missing, we can work on it. If you think that there's something that's misrepresented, we can work on it. Missing. Missing. Mm -hmm. It's entirely volunteers. I don't think the word volunteer is in there. Okay. It's a yeah, volunteer run program. We'll create a volunteer run program. But yeah, that is important. You could say a volunteer subcommittee of Northampton Board of Public Works. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Because it's not just volunteers at our events, it's also volunteers for the committee. Well, for the future, of course, because the committee will establish a permanent center, we already have it, so it would be right. the committee will operate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the new center. Uh, this is this is a huge mission statement. I, mean, I was going to say that's the thing. Just come across well, as like. <laughs> is, what serious. happened was this, this <laughs> was written for a grant, yeah. and uh, when I brought this to the committee a year or two ago, um, and said we need is this our you know what do you want to do for mission statement? People were really happy with this. They said this really does it. This says it. Sure. So we voted at that time to, to propose that this be our mission statement to the, thank you, to the Public Works Commission. So we did, and this is, they said, yes, this is fine. So it, we, can, we can adjust it. It's, I just wanted to put it out there so you have the big picture of mm -hmm. what we're supposed to be doing, and then the recenter is, is a piece of that. Can yeah. you write one, Matt, for the when we first were doing all the uh, paperwork? Well, we, we had our business plan. There's a recenter, but I think you guys are going to deal with that later. This is for the committee. I see, yeah. yeah right. I think it'd be nice to have a brainstorming session for ways to, uh, you know, make our umbrella much bigger. I mean, it's, I think we can only do so much with a small committee, relatively small committee, and getting volunteers, you know, we, we're still in the formative stages of getting stuff done. Uh, but if we can find ways to uh, get other organizations to do stuff and help guide them, I think that would get a lot more done. Like, did you, you posted something about one of a student who got some award recently doing reuse something? Somebody did. Anyways, uh, 
Kevin Hollenbach? No, he's the... No, he's the guy who's doing plastic bags. Right. Anyway, you know, if we can get going with the schools and doing reuse to get the students going, mm -hmm. uh, getting the students at Smith Vogue to do, uh, you know, learning mm -hmm. repair stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of ways we can, we can branch out and, and uh, promote reuse and, and not throwing stuff away. Right. But that's going to take, you know, a pretty good brainstorming session and then... And resources. And resources and, and a lot of ways to mm -hmm. figure out how to set these things up. And if you really want to meet this mission statement, then it's going to take a... I think, I think your point, as far as human resources is concerned, is a really good one because I don't see this going forth unless we do have Help. a community of people who like this stuff and therefore will want to see it. Right, it's part of our mission, though, to form partnerships with local reuse re organizations. Right, as much, yeah, as much as possible. Yeah. So I'm hearing some editing, perhaps, for this mission, for this statement, to with with tense, change the tense, um, emphasize volunteer, maybe a little bit more, uh, change that around. I'm hearing people wanting to talk about ways we can grow in the future as a committee based on this mission statement. Um, is there anything that you, anything significant that you feel needs to be changed? Uh, I would take out the word small in front of businesses. It doesn't have to be just small businesses. It can be all businesses. Which business, which the committee will also identify unmet needs for primary. reuse, investigate how to bridge the gaps and develop new options for reuse residents and small businesses. It should be for just businesses. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sponsors. Okay. And we already Sponsors. did with the, 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 the bag band. Mm -hmm. That's gotten the large businesses. Yep. Anything else? All right, no. no. Okay, cool. So, the summer 2006 goals. Yeah, we have. I'm sorry? Yeah, 2016. You, you have 21 16. something <laughs> in your email this morning. Boy, she's really getting ahead of us. 2016. <laughs> so, we don't have any events until the tag sale in October, I believe. We have clearly, um, it's not a, a huge challenge, but we want to make the recenter as, as sustainable as possible and figure, work on working out the kinks. So that's clearly a big goal for the summer. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to have an opportunity to talk about what other things you'd like to make happen over the summer with the understanding that people go on vacation and while it's this big open block of time we also have the recenter and and somewhat limited um people power during the summer um so one of the drivers as i understand it, of um, this whole idea to get together to informally talk about what we're doing i think started with a discussion a year or so ago about money and finances and resources and um, you know do we do we sell some of the stuff that comes in to raise money to mm -hmm. do stuff do we not do that um, but it sort of tumbled down is what where do we go from here kind of thing and so so in my mind we have to sort out some of those concepts and ideas before you can address what to do next mm -hmm. because we're kind of at that stage where we've well, we got the reuse center up and running, although it certainly needs um, <coughs> fine tuning and, mm -hmm. and additional maintenance. We really haven't had a chance to talk about where do we go from here. Well, the the financial piece, what I what I recall was that the finan we we said there was some controversy over whether we should sell stuff that was donated. Absolutely. So then then the question was, why are we needing to raise funds at all? And that led us to the mission of, or the vision, the mission and vision of the recenter, which is what the group is going to be talking about and right. brainstorming. Right. So we don't, but that was, um, so that that's kind of more on a on a bigger kind of more macro scale. I'm, when I'm talking about summer goals, I'm talking more of a micro scale. So there was some reference to um, some cosmetic work on the door. But clearly the roof um, is going to get done. The, then we have lighting that needs to be done. 
Um, so th these are the types of, of smaller kind of micro things at the recenter and potentially for the committee that I'm asking what kinds of things do you feel should get accomplished? This my, my interest in, in, in energy is leaning toward the networking, building community, building more of a reuse culture. I feel like that's what I would that for I the would, summer for the summer uh -huh. yeah like in small ways maybe but and I and I'm not being articulate about what exactly that means but I feel like the who takes what and having people come out to the recenter to collect things on Wednesdays mm -hmm. those are two small pieces of it mm -hmm. so yeah. you're saying like helping with more education for people that are out there I'm not sure what I'm saying yet. <coughs> yeah, it, but yeah, it, helping people, people understand where other so other places so that are doing what we're trying to do. Might be helpful for us. And I thought about a lot because people ask all the questions when they come out there. Is to to have a little bit more printed materials mm. to be able to provide um, um, some of the stuff we're handing out. And people say, "Well, tell me about the Reef Center. It's from a year ago mm -hmm. um, when you're just opening up." And um, the whole stuff about what gets recycled, what gets reused, what can be repurposed, and how we fit into all that, um, and what if what they have doesn't fit our availability. Um, there might be two or three different kinds of cards we could give people, like they're bringing out something that we don't take, like a lawnmower, gasoline our lawnmower, and say, well, here's some information about it, you can post it here, or you can take it there, or you really have to uh, leave it the uh, landfill if there's a place you could do that. I mean, but specific questions that people commonly answer, perhaps we could come up with some some cheat sheets that we could give people that we might have lined up or off a pull off pad or something that we could help think about. I see some Smith College students, you know, they were working, we had a with some folks over there, yeah. then they could be doing this, you know, they can do it on the computer, design it, we're going to have handouts, and let it on the website. So just just a suggestion of something that you yeah. might want to consider. Uh, I, I was thinking along those lines is that it would be good for us to develop a list of every business in Northampton, Amherst, East Hampton, anywhere close to here, in what we call our catchment area that uh, mm -hmm. does reuse. Uh -huh. and, and for example, uh, the, just the uh, all the food bins at the co-op and, and even at some of the, the large stores. So you, what uh, food facilities do you not need to bring? To get you know, can you bring a container to and refill? Mm -hmm. So if we could have sure. long lists of, of people that do that kind of stuff. Well, we, we put together a lot. Of, I know Anna last summer put together a lot of data about the who takes what. Who takes yeah. what? Who takes right. We haven't kind of made use of some of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That would be a good summer call to put yeah. that list together. Yeah. And that list is put put together, but yeah, to to make it a handout. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of paper for a handout, but well, or, but or a link what to I would website. Like to see is a information. Website. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Information. yeah. Or we yeah. could just have a, a flip chart in the recenter, you know. Well, we've talked about that. We'd yeah. have to put that on the, the bulletin board yeah. to put it up in yeah. Yeah. large print on the bulletin board. But already, some of it's out of date, you know, right. like yeah. the who takes what stuff. So we've got yeah. to. That's where the that's where having it as a as a online thing right. it's, it's even that but even that is going to take maintenance yeah sure mm -hmm. you can have a little slats that you pull out and mm -hmm. put in you know mm -hmm. the old-fashioned way mm -hmm. that would be fun but uh yeah that'd be a good that'd be fun let's develop this summer it's, it's already developed it's just a matter of finding the best way to make sure. it available to the people and also doing more community outreach for uh, for stores and businesses and people to to contact us or what their reuse opportunities are. So, so not just the ones that we've gone out and found, but they have more people. Right. So that would be a, a, a selling point for some stores if they could advertise what uh, items they have that don't require containers, don't use plastic, you know what I mean? You could just come and fill up a mm. bulk stuff. Bulk stuff. I mean, a uh, different drummer, you can get bulk oil and bulk uh, uh, balsamic vinegar that it's a pretty simple thing. It's only one thing, but it's something. Well, my motto is still the WISH Project in Lawrence for getting in touch with organizations 
that will then be our friend and you know, take us all the time. And we have one the vet who has a group of other vets that will can drive around picking up stuff and then they I think some of their Right, we're working on that. We're cultivating yeah. that with yeah, the Dakin that, and the exactly. Cancer Connection yeah. and Salvation Army. So Dakin was there because I still have something from the toy swap that was a like a pet carrier or something. So. Yeah. She was looking for more the things that they're gonna resell. Mm. That's what Salvation Army does. So, yeah. so they have a thrift store that does Apparently. all kinds of stuff? Apparently. Yeah. Oh. Is it in Springfield? Or? She told me and I'm not recalling. Mm. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. So when you look at the amount of things that we have to do this summer, I mean the, the amount of time we have to do this, some of these are are probably more long long term kind of goals, but this is good because it, everyone's juices are flowing. Um, and I think one thing that would be good to do is spend some time talking about this, that Diana's idea, yeah. and having more of this kind of brainstorming, like what does it mean to build a culture? What kinds of things can we do? And in the future, you know, we could try to, we could ask for a grant, you know, it's going to have to be a year from now, but um, if well, we have an idea, we can, we can write, you know, uh, write a grant proposal and try to get money, because there's only certain times of the year that you can apply. We are and you are so doing it too. I yeah, we are, we are, but, yeah. but, but more focused kind of conscious, yeah, you know, efforts. So, so this would be a good thing to talk about more. This you know, is naturally happening. I'm hoping to get together with John and talk a little bit more about that. One of the, one of the, my personal Thank summer you. goals is, and the reason why I asked to, um, ask, was, was excited when John offered some help, is the um, migrating our email list to something that's more workable than what we have. So um, that's going to be big. Because if we go, if we move to survey, I'm um, sorry, um, Mailchimp, we're going to have a lot more power over what we do and how we do it um, than with our current structure. As far as getting the who takes what on the website, mm -hmm. uh, where where's the stumbling block? On the stumbling block is, and that's another thing that I wanted to talk to John about, mm -hmm. finding the best structure or soft, uh, not even software. Finding the best way to make it happen so that it can be a link on our website. Okay. Though Anna had put it into an Excel, an Excel, Excel. type thing okay. that was ex that that is just very cumbersome to mm -hmm. use, and 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 um, I, I want to know what else is out there that we could do to make it more searchable and, and um, more intuitive and, and all those things. It's extremely cumbersome the way it is now. Franklin so County has a model, do they not? About, um, they have an online searchable where to get rid of things, I think. Do they? Okay. I, I should um, look into um, that. Maybe it was a dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so part of the problem is we use, no, it's not a problem, but we use Civic Plus, which is our kind of, um, um, uh, it's our overall web platform. Web platform. Yes, thank you. That, I didn't hear the word until. Um, yes, that's, our, that's the city of Northampton's web platform. They must use the same. And so either we need to link it to something, either we need to put, put it somewhere else and then provide a link, or we need to find a way to, to use the Civic Plus tools to make it happen. And I just uh, haven't had the time to do that. Is that something that a volunteer can help with or not really? To a certain extent. Okay. I, I mean, even just having the vision and understanding what needs to happen would be helpful for me okay. because it takes time to research it myself. Right, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so let, let um, us know. And like I have, yeah, I have met with IT, and there's limited. Uh, they have limited time and limited understanding of the system themselves. Mm. So, uh, mm -hmm. it means calling Civic Plus people, and you know, it's I it's see. a it's a long, it's a big project. So, um, clearly, I, it seems to me that the things for the summer are um, probably. 
hopefully that hopefully these are the key things that we want to focus on this summer does that make sense and and we also talked about the door i didn't want i don't know putting the door here are there any other physical site issues that you think need to be addressed this summer thank you for your ramp yes yeah. the mm -hmm. touch up to the uh, cement yeah mm -hmm. okay so cement touch up and door <coughs> door maintenance no okay painting any kind okay. of beautification on the outside plant plantings things like that I'd like to paint some plantings That'd be nice. you know the problem with plantings is that they have to be watered it's a hot it's a it's a, it's a um, driving sun and if, if nobody's there to water them, um, they get dried up. Yeah. I was trying so to convince Debbie and Joan to <coughs> paint the flowers on the front uh, under yeah, the window. I, I didn't get a lot of paint flowers. Oh, I like that. I like that. I we might made do the that. gray background so that we could that? We've embellish had some plastic, it. plastic flowers dropped off. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what? Oh, you know what I've seen, you guys? I have seen people do, um, do flowers out of dishes. And you on on uh -huh. fences, so you can yeah. have like you can hang rebars of, and stuff, and then put like a, a dish with a sure. a real a, you know a glass saucer as mm -hmm. the as the stamen or whatever sure. whatever that uh -huh. thing. Um, anyways, it's, it's it can be very done very. Just, just gonna know that's gonna happen. Yes, it yeah. is. You are correct. So, um, new business. Do we have any new business? Anybody. Not right now. Just, I, went, I went to just buy the, the, uh, the uh, what you call repair cafe materials. Uh -huh. uh, now 49 euros, but it cost $45 from my bank to, uh, to send a wire transfer. They don't take checks or anything. But I did find out they do take PayPal. Okay. But I don't have a PayPal account, so I have to sign up for a PayPal account. Okay. Well, I have to look. I did ask if we could pay for that out of the grant. And I don't remember their answer. Okay. We cannot pay for. I also asked if we could pay for techno trash. We we talked about collecting videotapes and CD cases. We can't do that through a grant. We can't do that. But we could collect grant. donations for that. We could we could use that out of our donation money. We could okay. pay for that. Yeah. But we could also ask people for specifically for if they want to drop that yeah. stuff off. We could. Yeah, we could. So um, just a quick uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I went to Western Mass Green Consortium meeting last night. Oh, did you go yep. last night? Oh, because, yeah. yeah. Um, it was all about composting and oh, yeah. where that is. And um, so the fellow from Kevin Hollerbach, who's a sustainability coordinator from UMass, was there, giving some of the experiences of uh, getting the dorm, some of the residences to, to do this, et cetera, et cetera. Kate Foley, uh, who's the green business person from CET, was there. And most interesting for me was Adam Martin, the current now only the son of the Robert Martin, who started Martin's Farm, which went from vegetables and uh, livestock to composting. <laughs> and so he went over all the the things that are involved, and uh, contamination is still the greatest one. But it's a lot more scientific than I ever come across <laughs> composting to be, um, how, how it's all put together, the specific gravity, uh, the uh, acidic content, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there was so much there that, and they have an open house, so this is a good one. Um, let's see. Martin's Farm does? Martin's Farm's having an open house. Saturday, 28th of May, 10 to 2. I don't want to go to that because I really want to see what they're doing. Saturday Where is the mark? Saturday, 28th. Uh, May 28. May 28. 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Where, 10 to 2. where is Mark Park? Up Greenfield. in Greenfield. Greenfield. Mm -hmm. uh, can't give you talk we have a compost expert um, here on the committee of sorts. She will be very modest, but um, Diana has attended the compost school in Maine, which is the, a very highly thought of it's a it's a very uh, prestigious in the world of compost I think it's a very <laughs> prestigious uh, compost university certification yes. yeah. in your own compost that's right that's right well thank you Peter um, next meeting we have been uh, this is the second week second Thursday of the month sometimes we've done third Thursdays we Second, th second Thursday works better because our working groups meet first and third, and that way it kind of spreads mm. out people's yeah, commitment. 
So that would be June 9th. So I, unless anyone has a problem with that, I think we should go for it. I can't be here the second and third. I have to work. But second and third. The second and third uh, Thursdays, Thursdays of June. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we could make it the first, but that's you know. Yeah. Okay. If it's just me. Okay. Well, don't. It's, it is you. But, uh, <laughs> I don't. I'm not going to say just you. You got to change your work schedule because that really <laughs> doesn't work. <for> us. <laughs> Anything else? Second. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're adjourned. Adjourned. Really good.